our first paper presenter is nirmalindu bishwas hello hello nirmalindu bishwas hello good afternoon okay uh, you can now start your your presentation uh, only one thing take time 10 minutes okay okay try to try to cover in 10 minutes okay okay now you can start now uh very good afternoon uh myself uh, nirmalant viswas from jadavpur university department of power engineering and uh, uh, i am going to present uh, our paper uh, magneto convective heat transfer in a cavity under partial magnetic fields uh, our co-authors are oporesh datto from nit durgapur and uh, professor nirmal kumar manna from jadavpur university now before going into the details about the proposed work uh, there are very few uh, basic terms uh, uh, everyone knows these uh, terms that is biasity driven convection this is basically uh, convective phenomena uh, under thermal gradient and uh, we can find numerous application of uh, biasity driven convection uh, in engineering as well as in medical device even even also in uh, nature uh, now with this biasity driven convection if we uh, Uh, consider magnetic field uh, uh, that means magneto hydrodynamics uh, which is basically uh, th uh, thermal uh, convection uh, in presence of uh, magnetic field uh, the terms can be uh, known as uh, magneto hydrodynamics now this uh, magneto hydrodynamics have a widespread application uh, in different fields uh, uh, such as uh, med uh, medical system Uh, for targeted drug delivery drug delivery in human body cancer treatment mm, cell separation uh, even also uh, various thermal devices uh, where uh, 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 precise control of the devices is required in that case uh, this magnetic field can play a very crucial role uh, several researcher have uh, focused uh, in this uh, convective heat transfer analysis uh, uh in uh, we can we can say uh, ostop and and his group jalil uh, they have uh, conducted uh, uh, several uh, numerical study and uh, they have little bit introduced about the partial magnetic field uh, but this partial magnetic field uh, uh, can be uh, utilized in several area depending upon the application so uh, objective of this research to examine the thermal convection in a bottom heated uh, cavity uh, under the influence of uh, partial magnetic field uh, why we have chosen this uh, uh, study uh, outcome of this study um, can be very uh, effective uh, for practical application uh, so, such as fuel cell separation uh, and also uh, in other uh, medical devices uh, for designing this kind of devices we need to understand about the basic flow physics Uh, so to understand the basic uh, uh, flow physics we have uh, chosen a simple uh, uh, geometry that is a uh, automated cavity uh, automated square cavity having two side cold wall um, so bottom wall is heated isothermally and uh, side wall are cold isothermally um, so uh, different uh, working fluid has been chosen uh, different working fluid that means uh, prandtl number uh, say 0.054 that is molten metal and uh, air and uh, water 6.93 prandtl number so this uh, working fluid has been chosen for the uh, for understanding the uh, magnetic field effect on this uh, working fluid uh, so we have uh, uh, considered a external magnetic field which is acting vertically from bottom uh, and we have assumed that the flow field uh, flow field is uh, steady incompressible newtonian and uh, to model the biasity term we have uh, Uh, taken uh, bosonic approximation so uh, other uh, consideration like uh, viscous dissipation joule heating hall effect uh, everything has been ignored for the simplicity of the analysis uh, so th these are the basic governing equation uh, uh, continuity equation momentum equation and energy equation uh, and these are the dimensionless governing equation to derive this dimensionless governing equation we have utilized uh, some of the scaling parameter 
and from where we can define some dim dimensionless parameter that is uh, Rayleigh number and Prandtl number and uh, Hartmann number. So these are the governing parameters. Uh, now, uh, partial magnetic field has been imposed uh, with the factor lambda, uh, and this is basically uh, coupled with the uh, x momentum equation. Now the boundary conditions are uh, theta equal to one at the heated wall and theta equal to zero at the cold wall. And uh, to analyze the global parameter, uh, we have uh, um, utilized uh, overall Nusselt number, average Nusselt number that is NU, and uh, this NU can uh, uh, tell us about the about uh, heat transfer characteristic. So the analysis has been carried out uh, using in-house CFD code, uh, which is based on finite volume method and simple algorithm has been followed. The converg uh, convergence level has been uh, taken as 10 to the power minus seven for, uh, for the residuals and mass defect. Uh, now grids, grid size has been chosen as 200 by 200, uh, which is distributed uniformly. Uh, uniform di uh, grid distribution has been chosen to capture uh, uh, the partial magnetic field uh, so that there should not be any effect uh, of the uh, grids on the result. And the range of governing parameters are Rayleigh number uh, 10 to the power three to 10 to the power six, Hartmann number 0 to 100 and the length of the applied magnetic field uh, that is defined as LB which is taken as 0 to 1 and uh, Prandtl number uh, 0 0.054, 0 0.71 and 6.93. Uh, so uh, uh, from the uh, analysis point of view we have uh, presented first uh, the effect of uh, Rayleigh number. Uh, for uh, understanding this uh, Rayleigh number, we have uh, presented here the combined plot of streamline isotherm. Um, isotherms are presented in do uh, dashed line uh, and uh, purple color has, uh, colored line has been utilized for presenting the streamline. And this is presented in the first row. And the bottom row, uh, heat line contours have been uh, presented. Uh, heat line contours basically signify about the uh, heat energy transportation from a heated source to heat sink. So uh, due to the bottom heating condition, uh, hot fluid from the bottom wall, uh, it is uh, uh, rising upward and then after obstruction from the upper wall, uh, naturally it is uh, splitted into two half and then it is pulled at the side walls. Then again, it is coming down and then the circulation forms. So we can see at the low Rayleigh number, uh, two symmetrical circulation is formed and uh, higher, uh, higher uh, temperature uh, isotherms are clustered uh, near the bottom wall and low temperature uh, isotherms are clustered with the cold side wall. And now uh, at the low Rayleigh number, uh, heat transfer mechanism is basically governed by the uh, conduction mode of heat transfer. So convection mode almost uh, absent. So that's why uh, isotherms are uh, clustered near the bottom wall. But uh, when it is increases to uh, 10 to the power 4 and 10 to the power uh, 5, then uh, convection mechanism uh, uh, dominates to the conduction mode. That's why convex, uh, convective cell uh, motion increases. That means uh, streamline function, uh, streamline uh, uh, can uh, uh, stream, uh, stream function strength can be increased uh, so we can see from the streamline contours. Accordingly, um, as, as uh, followed by the streamline, uh, we can see uh, from the heated bottom wall, heat energy is transported uh, uh, from the bottom wall to cold side wall. Now with the increase in the uh, Rayleigh number, as the heat energy uh, uh, input to the cavity increases, so uh, heat line contours are strengthened and uh, we can see there is a formation of energy recirculating cell. So whenever heat, uh, heat energy input increases, so um, heat line contours are co heat line contours corridors are uh, shortened uh, as the energy intensity increases. Now uh, we can understand about the um, effect of uh, Hartmann number uh, as the Hartmann number increases from uh, zero to hundred. Uh, zero to zero means uh, there is no magnetic field. We can see the um, uh, streamline uh, uh, streamline contours are more uh, dense and uh, stream function have higher uh, higher value. But with the increase in the Hartmann number, uh, stream function value decreases and it deforms. Uh, similarly, uh, heat line contours are uh, deformed. So why why it is deformed? Uh, we can uh, we can recall the x momentum equation. There is a negative negative term uh, due to the imposed magnetic field. So due to this uh, negative term, um, it uh, counteracts the buoyancy force. That's why uh, fluid circulation decreases. And as a result, 
uh, nasal number uh, decreases that means heat transfer rate decreases with the increase in the hartman number now uh, we can uh, uh, we can understand about the effect of the um, magnetic field uh, magnetic field uh, over which it is acting so when the length uh, of the imposed magnetic field is increases from 0.1 to uh, 1 that means um, uh, affected zone in the cavity increases so we can uh, see um, streamline as well as a uh, heat energy contour lines are also uh, distorted due to uh, more uh, resistance uh, to the flow flow field as a result heat transfer also decreases now uh, we can uh, see from uh, different uh, working fluid uh, the flow field as well as the energy field uh, varies uh, uh, significantly uh, when uh, prandial number is low we can see uh, streamlines are uh, stressed vertically um, and uh, heat, heat line contours also stressed vertically but with the uh, increase in the prandial number we can see the um, heat line uh, heat line contours as well as streamline contours are uh, distorted uh, and uh, uh, we can see average nasal number uh, is increases uh, that is very uh, very clear as uh, prandial number increases its conduct uh, thermal conductivity increases so with this uh, convection mechanism becomes uh, stronger and that's why heat transfer is more uh, for understanding that uh, uh, heat transfer characteristic we, uh, we can uh, verify the velocity uh, velocity field and temperature field uh, about the mid plane so uh, from this uh, velocity contour we can see the magnet ma maximum velocity uh, achieved about the uh, middle middle point uh, and uh, with this uh, uh, with this from this velocity field we can understand uh, for the prandial number 0 0.054 the velocity is less compared to um, compared to fluid uh, 0.71 so vertical velocity component is higher for the air and then uh, for prandial number 0 0.054 now, uh, from the heat transfer analysis, we can understand with the increase in the Rayleigh number, uh, average nasal number increases. Uh, and uh, when uh, for the fixed uh, Rayleigh number, uh, Hartman number increases, uh, average nasal number decreases. Uh, the reason al already uh, we have understood uh, with the increase in the uh, magnetic field strength, uh, flow, uh, uh, flow strength decreases as a result, heat transfer decreases. And uh, uh, higher heat transfer is always achieved uh, with the with the uh, water as a uh, working fluid uh, compared to um, uh, molten metal 0 0.054. So uh, from the summary uh, of this study, we can say uh, the major findings uh, are uh, with the as the Rayleigh number increases, uh, uh, get, greater than uh, 10 to the power 4, convective heat transfer characteristic increases uh, monotonically uh, as the buoyancy force increases. Uh, heat line uh, contours uh, clearly uh, display about the heat energy uh, transportation from uh, heat source to heat sink and uh, it is very uh, essential tool for understanding the flow physics at uh, pr equal to 0.71 and uh, 6.93 the convective heat transfer uh, process improves markedly compared to uh, pr equal to 0 0.054 so uh, with lower uh, pr value buoyancy force retarded substantially as the magnetic field uh, intensity increases, uh, heat transfer rate decreases substantially. Uh, overall heat transfer characteristic shows a decreasing trend uh, with the increasing uh, active length uh, of the magnetic field. The effective um, magnetic force uh, uh, are more with the higher, um, uh, higher Hartman number. Even also at higher Rayleigh number, it is more. So uh, whenever uh, we will increase the length of the uh, active uh, active area for the magnetic force and also the intensity of the magnetic force then the heat transfer rate uh, decreases so from this study we can uh, understood uh, by proper controlling of the intensity of the magnetic field and also the active portion of the magnetic field we can control any thermal device uh, so this information can be very uh, helpful for designing any thermal device so these are the references Thank you for uh, listening. Uh, nice presentation, you want to do. Uh, we learn from your uh, paper many more things. Uh, have any question from audience? Oh, okay. Uh, Mimolanda, I have one question. Hello. Yes. Uh, 
this is basically your sim uh, this is the simulation work right so in which platform you perform this simulation audible hello hello sorry please uh, continue uh, mm, mm, in which uh, this is your basically simulation work in which platform you uh, simulate this result actually uh, we have uh, analyzed this uh, work uh, using our in house cfd code the this cfd code is basically based on finite volume method so this is a proven solver uh, and al already we have validated our code with the published result so we have not presented here due to shortage uh, of the uh, pages okay 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 mm. okay very good uh, presentation uh, any question from an audience no okay uh, thank you mm. next session. okay uh, hello yes next uh, paper uh, next uh, paper paper presentation also nirmalandu vishas you can able to now present your second paper paper id 158 right okay thank you okay you can continue now okay uh, once again uh, very good afternoon uh, actually this work uh, has been carried out uh, by our uh, final year uh, student uh, who have already left so i have to present now so i am going to present uh, the work uh, msd convection in cavity under partially applied magnetic fields our co-authors Ritesh Samanto, uh, Aparish Dutta, and Nirmal Kumar Manna. So, magnetohydrodynamics uh, already uh, we know uh, there are various uh, devices or various systems where we can find the uh, application of magnetohydrodynamics. Uh, in our real life, uh, in medical system, uh, we can find MRI uh, where magnetic field plays a very, very uh, crucial role, even also. Um, targeted drug delivery system, uh, magnetic plays, uh, magnetic field plays a very uh, important role. Uh, even also, very uh, various thermal system. Uh, nowadays, developing, uh, considering uh, impact of the uh, magnetic field, as these tools can be utilized uh, as an effective means for controlling the uh, thermal uh, flow behavior. So that's why its uh, application is growing day by day. So uh, even even also uh, um, uh, fuel cell application, it is also controlled by uh, this mag uh, magnetic field. So that's why we have uh, chosen this area for uh, um, uh, detailed understanding of the magnetohydrodynamics. So uh, we have uh, chosen uh, partial magnetic fields, uh, uh, how it can uh, affect the flow field. So uh, Jolil et al. and uh, Sajabo, they have utilized the par uh, partially magnetic field, uh, uh, how it can affect uh, the flow field. So from that, uh, that concept, we can understand uh, uh, partial magnetic field can be utilized uh, for uh, uh, heat transfer analysis. But uh, uh, some basic understanding it is not uh, clear um, under different uh, parametric conditions. So that's why uh, we have chosen a simple problem that is differential heated cavity uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, implemented or developed a concept uh, that uh, instead of applying the magnetic field over the entire uh, uh, domain uh, we can we can create a band concept that means instead of uh, uh, whole length uh, we can split it into different bands uh, so uh, with this um, application, you can control the thermal flow behavior. So this is a novel technique uh, which we have uh, worked out. So few results uh, uh, we have presented here. So basic um, geometry, problem geometry is differential heated cavity. Uh, left wall is isothermally heated, right wall is isothermally cold and uh, magnetic field has, has been considered here either horizontal or vertical. That's why the angle uh, gamma has been introduced. So the flow has been assumed a steady, incompressible, and Newtonian. 
and uh, Buznik approximation has been uh, taken uh, taken care to model the buoyancy force. So uh, here important uh, term is that uh, LB has been uh, defined to introduce the partial magnetic field. Even uh, for keeping the fixed length, uh, we have uh, splitted the magnetic field uh, acting uh, over the domain. So th that has been defined as a uh, band. That is, uh, it may be top band, middle band, or uh, even it may be splitted mode, that is four bands. So we can understand from the results before going into the results, uh, uh, we can uh, we can see the basic governing equation, uh, continuity equation, momentum equation, energy equation, and the, these are the dimensionless governing equation which has been derived utilizing the scaling parameters. Are the boundary conditions are uh, given? That is uh, theta equal to one for the heated wall, theta equal to zero for the cold wall, and uh, Nusselt number has been utilized to present the overall heat transfer rate. So utilizing the in-house developed CFD code, uh, we have analyzed this problem and this code is based on finite volume method and simple algorithm. And uh, to handle the convex uh, diffusion terms, uh, uh, central differencing scheme has been utilized and a quick scheme has been uh, utilized for the advection term. Uh, for this problem, we have uh, chosen 100 by 100 grid size, uh, which is distributed uniformly. And uh, overall result, results have been presented utilizing uh, streamline isotherms and average Nusselt number. The range of controlling parameters are Raleigh number, uh, two sets of Raleigh number has been taken, that is 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 6, and Hartmann number has been varied from 0 to 100. And the length of the active magnetic field uh, has been taken as 0 to 1. And uh, gamma, that is inclination of the magnetic field, has been taken as two value. That means uh, whether it is uh, horizontal or vertical with respect to uh, x axis. Now, fr uh, from the um, uh, variation of the Rayleigh number, uh, we can uh, uh, we can understand uh, the Rayleigh number plays a very crucial role on the uh, thermal flow field. As uh, um, Rayleigh number uh, is low, that means uh, 10 to the power uh, 10 to the power uh, less than 10 to the power uh, 5. So in that case, uh, heat transfer is dominated by conduction mode. But uh, from Rayleigh number 10 to the power 5 and 6, uh, convection mechanism plays a uh, uh, crucial role. So uh, at the Rayleigh number 10 to the power 5, uh, we can see um, there is a uh, uh, floor circulation uh, within, the, um, within the cavity. And this is due to the differential heating. So uh, with this differential heating, uh, Clockwise, uh, clockwise circulation uh, cell is formed uh, and the circulation is uh, not uniform it is distorted uh, the reason is very clear uh, here uh, we have present uh, we have chosen magnetic field uh, in a band so this band length has been taken as 0 0.3 that means magnetic magnetic field is acting over the um, over the length 0 0.3 of the vertical wall and it is placed uh, in the top row uh, in the top portion of the cavity so that's why fluid circulation is not uh, distributed uh, symmetrically about the mid plane. So it is uh, distorted. So when Raleigh number is increases further, this distortion can be seen uh, very easily. Um, uh, there are there are uh, teeny circulation cell uh, in the upper side, even also lower side with respect, and the flow is uh, uh, not symmetrical about the horizontal uh, mid plane. Isotherms are clustered uh, near the active walls. Now, uh, when the magnetic field is uh, placed uh, about the middle portion, that means uh, for the fixed length of 0.3, uh, we can see uh, flow, flow circulation is distorted uh, and the flow uh, um, separation can, can be seen. That means uh, at the upper portion, uh, one circulation cell and the in the bottom portion, another circulation cell. And this happens due to the uh, partially active magnetic field. Uh, when Rayleigh number increases from 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6, we can see uh, streamline uh, distorted uh, mildly, and uh, isotherm is also distorted uh, mm -hmm. from 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6 ch uh, change. Uh, we can see isotherms are distorted from uh, uh, diagonal to horizontal. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, we can see uh, the effect of the uh, of the uh, partial magnetic field uh, for the effective length 0.4 we have distributed the magnetic um, magnetic field in four bands uh, uh, that is presented in the first column 
uh, then uh, for the fixed length 0.4 uh, it is presented uh, in the second column that is for top band position in the third column it is middle band position and uh, in the uh, last column it is uh, uh, bottom uh, bottom band that means uh, for the uh, same uh, effective length 0.4 uh, we can see when uh, the mag magnetic field is uh, distributed uh, in the form of bands so the flow field uh, distortion is quite less uh, whereas uh, for the um, for the top top band position and uh, bottom band position we can see flow uh, flow structure distorted uh, um, much more uh, however uh, isotherms are not uh, distorted so much uh, as the magnetic field uh, strength uh, is uh, not uh, high now uh, when the when the magnetic field intensity is increases from uh, 10 to 30 uh, we can understand for the single uh, uh, single band uh, for length length is one that means uh, magnetic field is acting over the entire do uh, entire domain so uh, 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 flow flow field is uh, substantially uh, um, uh, distorted as the entire domain is uh, under the effect of magnetic field but uh, when it is uh, when it is uh, under the effect of partial magnetic field uh, say length for point uh, point 1 but it is in the different bands um, so magnetic uh, magnetic field effect uh, is quite less uh, on the flow structure uh, even even at the higher uh, higher uh, magnetic field intensity that is uh, h equal to 100 uh, we can see uh, uh, due to the imposing uh, four bands, uh, the flow structure uh, are takes a zigzag shape, and isotherm also takes a zigzag shape. Uh, the reason is that uh, there is an alternating active and inactive zone of the magnetic field. That's why flow structure uh, uh, affected uh, for the four band position. Now, from the um, uh, from this analysis, we can uh, see. Uh, heat transfer characteristic uh, quite uh, interesting uh, it is very common uh, uh, common fact that uh, when whenever magnetic field uh, is absent in the flow domain the heat transfer is maximum uh, and uh, at the higher Rayleigh number this heat transfer is also uh, more so from the first figure we can see uh, Nusselt number distribution for the Rayleigh number 10 to the power 6 is at higher position but uh, it shows a decreasing trend with the increasing magnetic field strength. Um, this is very, uh, uh, very much expected as the magnetic field intensity increases. The negative term uh, appeared in the buoyancy uh, uh, appeared in the momentum uh, equation. Uh, it counteracts the buoyancy term, so that's why heat transfer rate decreases as the magnetic field uh, intensity increases. Now, uh, interestingly, from the second uh, plot, we can see uh, when the magnetic field is um, uh, vertical, uh, uh, the heat transfer uh, retardation is much much less compared to um, uh, heat transfer uh, for the case of uh, horizontal uh, magnetic field. Even uh, when the magnetic field intensity increases, uh, we can see uh, uh, for the uh, for, uh, for the four banded position, heat transfer rate decre decreasing is much more, uh, which is indicated uh, in the third curve. Uh, uh, as marked by a red line curve so uh, for the top band position we can see top band position and mid uh, bottom band position heat transfer decrement is quite less so uh, uh, for the middle band position heat transfer dec uh, decrement is much more uh, compared to top and bottom uh, bottom band position uh, so from this analysis we can understand uh, by arranging the magnetic field uh, whether uh, in single band or multiple band or over the entire domain it can significantly alter the uh, flow structure as well as uh, heat transfer characteristic. So from this analysis, uh, we can uh, we, we can understand that uh, fluid flow and temperature uh, pattern uh, is markedly uh, changes uh, uh, with the Rayleigh number. And a higher higher Rayleigh, uh, Rayleigh number results in a higher Nusselt, Nusselt number uh, that that is due to uh, stronger convection. Now, partially imposed magnetic field modifies flow structure and temperature distribution significantly over the entire length of the magnetic field. Uh, the usage of the partial magnetic field uh, in a single band or four bands is always beneficial compared to whole length uh, magnetic field. The vertical magnetic field has a lesser uh, dampening effect uh, on the heat transfer characteristic. By in, uh, increasing the Hartmann number, the heat transfer rate is found to be uh, decreasing substantially. 
uh, now uh, from this analysis we can uh, understood that by uh, controlling the uh, controlling and arranging the imposed magnetic field you can uh, uh, control the thermofluid flow behavior and that is very expected for designing any thermal devices uh, devices which is uh, uh, applicable for uh, industry as well as medical science so these are the references and thank you for listening Mm, uh, nice presentation in Malindu. Uh, any question from audience? No. Okay, uh, uh, in Malindu, I have one question. Hello. Yes. Uh, this is your also same your own CFD code uh, generated result. Have you any validation of this result or experimental or any other method, existing method? Have you any result? Actually, uh, apart from the magnetic field, uh, we have validated uh, our numerical code with our in-house uh, experimental uh, result. But uh, after that, uh, we have also uh, verified our uh, numerical result with the, uh, with the uh, uh, recent work as uh, published by OSTOP, uh, this partial magnetic field concept has been uh, validated. Even also the, uh, uh, even also this uh, uh, magnetic field uh, field effect also we have validated with the uh, Ghashemi, uh, Ghashemi paper. So that is also very uh, uh, high, highly cited paper. So uh, with this validation study, we, we can uh, say that our code is quite capable to capture the correct uh, impact of the of this variation uh, under different flow conditions. Right, right. Uh, very good your uh, paper work, uh, nice work. Uh, thank you uh, for your to uh, paper presentation, okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, our next uh, paper presentation will be uh, Patho Haldar. Patho Haldar. Hello. Yes. Yes, uh, Professor. Am I audible? Hi. Yes, you are audible now. You are ready for presentation? Uh, uh, sir, uh, who will share the screen? Sh should I share the screen or the organizer? You can share the screen. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, is the screen visible? Ha ha, visible. Visible. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, a very good afternoon uh, to all of the, all of the delegates present here. Uh, Professor Mondol uh, as the uh, session chair. Uh, so, um, today I, I am Partho Haldar, assistant professor of uh, uh, mechanical engineering um, of Government College of Engineering and Ceramic Technology. And today, for the next few minutes, I will be talking on intelligent control of air conditioner for reduced energy consumption using pressure sensor basically <clears throat> and this paper is co-authored by two of my colleagues alok mukherjee and dr kingsuk chatterjee who are assistant professor of electrical and computer science engineering respectively so actually uh, uh, when there was the about one month ago from the last deadline of paper submission for this particular con conference, we three had a similar situation in our college auditorium. And uh, basically uh, in this figure, what we can see is that the seminar hall uh, is, this seminar hall is basically uh, occupied by some uh, delegates and we can see the gathering is mostly congested in the uh, left left front side and a very few persons are there in the uh, uh, front right side and two or three persons are sitting on the um, on the uh, very uh, end of the seminar hall now we all know that uh, this kind of seminar halls are basically um, uh, um, a, Basically, the air circulation is controlled by ACs and all, so central AC systems are uh, incorporated. 
but if we run the ac system in full swing uh, what happens basically the uh, see uh, in the back end of this hall very few persons are there so there is no need of ac uh, ac blower in that particular area so if we can control the uh, blower speed in that way so energy consumption can be reduced so we the key feature of this work is to develop a simple and cost effective method for controlling the air conditioner blower and fans in a room the speed of the blower and fans are governed by the number of people in the room and their location and how we can sense that location to sense that location uh, we have you we have models that uh, analog pressure sensor installed in identified locations of the room and uh, obviously this uh, design will mm, this design itself is a very low cost design and uh, as a result we can optimize the use of electricity uh, reduction in energy waste can be achieved for sustainable future so as i told you you can see one exemplary uh, room model the room is divided into eight blocks basically uh, eight tiles we can see and uh, this is a central ac and this is the plan view of the room so uh, say for example the ducts are uh, from the top of the room so the red color indication shows that those are the ac blowers and uh, blue colors are the fan fans are hanging from the ceiling and uh, the uh, triangle black triangle is the basically pressure sensor which is installed on the floor beneath the carpet so accordingly uh, so the, this model basically requires very uh, uh, low cost microcontroller uh, and uh, analog pressure sensor in channel mosfet and this simulation work we have not used uh, we have not done yet the hardware uh, uh, testing and all we have just modeled it in uh, matlab so this is the motor drive scheme we can see this is the power circuit and uh, this uh, power circuit consists of ac supply then rectifier to dc because we have considered that the blower of the ac or the fan are basically operated by dc motor so that is why uh, rectifier is used and now here the control circuit pressure sensor then followed by microcontroller then mosfet so this is the simulation design we can see uh, here uh, this particular simulation design is for one tile and one pressure sensor as i have shown in the uh, room model uh, such kind of eight uh, designs uh, will be uh, will be a full uh, for that particular room okay this is for one motor and one pressure sensor so say for example uh, in one tile there is two or three persons are standing so these are the simulated analog sensor unit so depending on the weight depending on the se pressure uh, sensed by that sensor uh, number of switch there are four switches are there so uh, it is basically proportional to the number of people present okay so say for example if two switches are there then one uh, two persons are there standing on that tile so one switch will engage similarly uh, four or five persons are standing so three three switches may engage and say for example if eight persons are there or, or more than eight then obviously whole four switches will engage and proportionally the voltage will be provided to the microcontroller and then followed to the mosfet and the blower speed ac blower speed uh, will be uh, can be controlled okay so this is the simple design and these are the pin configuration uh, basically here in the microcontroller uh, the left hand side uh, we can see that uh, these uh, 2 3 4 basically these are the input ports and these are the output ports uh, rd0 rd1 rd3 these are the basically output ports now uh, and uh, when we uh, we have checked uh, by varying some voltages and all and we can find that uh, depending on uh, loading the blower speed can be controlled so this is a simple idea that we have proposed basically in literature uh, what is there uh, some heat sensor based uh, heat camera based um, model of 
such kind of uh, arrangements are they are in the literature but those are basically very much uh, costly so what we have tried to focus here uh, that uh, very low cost uh, this kind of circuit will hardly cost 1000 to 12 1200 uh, or um, 1500 rupees only so um, this is the uh, idea we we wish to uh, wanted to share and um, thanks to the reviewer of this organizing uh, conference that they have selected our paper and given the scope to present our idea thank you sir okay okay uh, any question from audience oh, no okay yeah. patro mm -hmm. yes sir Hello? yes um uh, your uh, paper idea is very good uh, if you, if it is possible to practically implement it then obviously we can benefit it, uh, from our your uh, design system you can reduce the energy consumption uh, yes, energy consumption yes uh, very good your idea and nice your presentation uh, thank you for participating thank our you. conference thank you sir thank you we we also have a plan to implement it just after once the pandemic is over and we will surely uh, uh, take the meter reading and all in in a particular prototype model okay sir very good very good nice idea okay thank you thank you thank you sir uh, sir, uh, sir actually uh, i am uh, out basically i am uh, at present uh, outside my home can i leave now for <laughs> i i am driving i am driving and uh, i am <laughs> presenting from road okay 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 okay, 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 okay with, you with your with your with your permission i am leaving okay sir okay okay thank okay, you. okay 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 uh so our uh, next paper presentation subhadeep chakraborty subhadeep chakraborty is present here yes sir am i audible ha yeah you are audible uh, you can now start your presentation okay sir i am sharing my screen okay 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 sir you are seeing uh okay okay, okay full Hi, your uh, paper title and name is uh, shown. Okay, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, okay. professors. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to give a presentation here. I am Subodip Chakraborty, and today I am giving a presentation on comparison of thermohydraulic performance enhancement of liquid-based cryogenic nanofluid flow in turbulent region through rectangular plate-fin heat exchangers. so this is the outline of the presentation there is introduction methodology results and discussion and conclusion okay in recent years a lot of work is going on the field of cryogenics because of its application and now the work is going more prominently with the advancement of technologies <coughs> many researchers have done their work on the fin geometry of the plate of fin fin heat exchangers but only a few works have been published on cryogenic nanofluid temperature over the years cryogenics has been generally used to refer temperatures below approximately minus 150 degrees celsius and the word cryogenics is originates from the greek word cryo in this slide we are seeing the explored view of two layers of a plate fin heat exchanger the concept of plate fin heat exchanger is metal fins are placed between the plates and the structure is joined together by brazing at the edges of the plates there are bars which contain each fluid within the space between the adjacent plates the heights of corrugations and bars may vary between the plates as shown in the figure for a liquid stream we use a low height corrugation uh, uh, low height corrugation matching high heat transfer coefficient with lesser surface area while for a low pressure stream we can use a high corrugation height matching low coefficient with higher surface area 
one of the earliest and most comprehensive works has been done by case and london in 1948 their methodology gives us the complete methodology and the details of the experiment which sets up others researchers to use the same experiment technique for experimental determination of heat transfer coefficient and the friction factor a nanofluid is basically a fluid containing nanometer sized particles called nanoparticles these fluids are engineered colloidal suspension of nanoparticles in a base fluid nanoparticles used in nanofluids are typically made of metals oxide carbides and carbon nanotube there are basically two ways to make a nanoparticle there is two step method and single step method in the two step method we first produce dry powders with chemical processes and then nano nano sized powders are dispersed into the host fluid and in case of single step method the process consists of simultaneously making and dispersing the particles in the fluid uh the pin fin heat exchanger of rectangular cross section is our interest of study rectangular fins are sandwiched by the metallic plates above which hot fluid is flowing and these are the working range which we have used in this experiment this is the mesh of the model which we have created it contains hexahedral cells faces at the boundaries and the total number of cell is 219856 we have chosen names of various surfaces as per our need that is velocity inlet pressure outlet heated bottom wall periodic side wall heated top plate and symmetric side wall uh these are the thermophysical properties of the nano fluid from this first we calculated the density then overall specific heat and then the viscosity and thermal conductivity these are the governing equations which we have used in this experiment and this is the basically the process <coughs> now we have done the grid independency test and this graph shows that it keeps on increasing with the number of elements there is a limit up to which the results can be improved it is clearly seen that almost after 3.5 lakh elements pressure drops become constant so choosing number of elements near 3 lakh will remove unnecessary complications uh, this is the formula of fanning friction factor and kolberg j factor which we have used uh, this is the result of validation with the experimented result Uh, this graph shows that the, with the with increasing of Reynolds number in turbulent region, friction factor decreases. Friction factor is a non-dimensionless term used to calculate the pressure drop in the pin-fin heat exchanger. Pressure drop in terms of Fanning friction factor is high in case of CO liquid helium cryo nano fluid in comparison to other cryo nano fluids, as shown in the figure. But from the figure, it is clear that helium-based cryonano fluids are more effective in terms of convective heat transfer. This graph shows with increasing of Reynolds number in turbulent region, Kolberg J factor also decreases. Kolberg J factor is a non-dimensionless term used to estimate the heat transfer coefficient in the pin-fin heat exchanger. It is observed in figure that CO nanoparticles are very effective in increasing. the convective heat transfer coefficient in terms of kolberg j factor in comparison to al2o3 fe3o4 and swcnd this graph shows with increasing of reynolds number in turbulent region volume goodness factor also decreases so co liquid co liquid helium based cryo nano fluids having best performance among the other cryo nano fluids studied based on the volume goodness factors and 25% to 30% enhancement of the overall performance considering both the heat exchanger pressure drop has been found with cryo nano fluids used in comparison liquid helium only this was the conclusion thank you okay any question from audience uh, myself dr nirmalindu biswas from jadavpur university i have a, a simple uh, question that is for my understanding 
uh, for this analysis uh, whether you have taken thermal conductivity and viscosity from uh, theoretical uh, table or from experimental data the theoretical table uh, that is the problem actually um, uh, for the uh, nano materials uh, there are uh, diverse uh, um, uh, fields of data so for the correct uh, um, simulation uh, you may try for the uh, experimental data that will give you exact result correct result okay sir uh, I... okay sir okay thank you thank you sir uh okay shubhadi uh, nirmalendu bishwas asking your a good question you try to your um, simulation and experimental result both are validated this better thing okay so this is the good presentation and the attempt uh, shubhadi thank you uh, thank sir. you for your nice nice presentation okay thank you sir uh our next uh, presenter anirban jana is present anirban jana is available yes sir can you hear me ha ha okay you can now start okay i'll present myself try to cover in 10 minutes okay 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 start your ppt first you share your ppt Yes, yes. Uh, can you see my screen? Starting. Uh, Is yes. my screen okay, visible? Okay. 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 Ha, ha. okay. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Onirban Jana, and I performed this study while I was doing my bachelor's in mechanical engineering at Jadavpur University. and i would like to thank ictma for giving me this opportunity to present this work today and actually having this conference even during the pandemic times so the topic of my paper is performance study of a small capacity thermoacoustic refrigerator using the delta ic software i did this work at jadavpur university under the council of professor shorof sarkar and professor achintu mukhopadhyay but i am currently at chimi paritech psl uh, in paris uh, doing my masters so I'll start. The question is, what is thermal acoustics? So this term is not really uh, that popular in our uh, field, but thermal acoustics is the simple interaction between heat and sound. You use acoustic energy to produce thermal effects, or you use thermal energy to produce acoustic effects. Acoustic energy is nothing but the cyclic compression and expansion of a gas. so when you have compression and expansion we everyone knows that we have temperature oscillations and we can use we can tap that temperature oscillations to uh, convert that energy into thermal energy some examples of thermal acoustics engine is a reeker tube and a stirling heat engine so in a reeker tube it's not really an engine because it's uh, not an efficient device to be honest it's more of a demonstration thing what happens is you heat a filament inside a tube and this sets up Uh, uh and this uh, locally heats up the region and you pass air from the bottom so you you have a, a cyclic compression and uh, expansion which produces sound and for the thermal acoustic refrigerator uh, there is a standing wave refrigerator and the orifice pass tube refrigerator what we'll discuss here is a standing wave refrigerator because that's the most simplest thing thermal acoustic effects occur every time we speak but the temperature effect is so small that we don't really feel it now the main motive behind studying thermal acoustic devices is that there are minimal moving parts because we only need a speaker a stack and a resonator tube I'll, i'll come to the components but there are very little components for a thermal acoustic device it's environment friendly you can use air or any other non toxic gases you don't need cfcs it's compact it uses cheaper materials and there are like no closer tolerances once you have set up the device so a few examples of thermal acoustic devices this is the basic schematic of a thermal acoustic device you have a speaker at one end you you fill this uh, resonator tube with a stack and you have two heat exchangers one is the cold heat exchanger and is the hot heat exchanger so i'll explain this uh, schematic later again but the essence is you uh, 
introduce sound from one end and this end is closed due to the temper due to the oscillating wave it's inside the resonator you have a temperature difference so this is like the pressure curve and this is the velocity curve which you have they are phase shifted by uh, pi by 2 because again where you have the highest pressure you have the minimum velocity because this end is closed so the gas does not pass through it and this is one example of thermoacoustic uh, 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 refrigerator which is at ETH Zurich so they have developed this device and it's not really commercialized but they can show the effect which is happening this is again at the Los Alamos lab US so they are the team which is specializing in thermoacoustics this is a more complex uh, thermoacoustic uh, device where you have a thermoacoustic engine which produces the acoustic effect and you use that acoustic effect to produce the cooling effect in a refrigerator so this is a cycle thing so like this is for simultaneous cooling and heating of some components next i'll come to the physics so i'll take some time to explain this but it's uh, simple enough so what you have is an open tube one side is closed you introduce sound from this end since this is a closed tube you have a standing wave generated in it and this is the stack which we are talking about and if you look at the temperature and the location of a parcel graph this white line is the temperature gradient which exists in the stack so when the gas parcel oscillates from one end to another it gets compressed here it it expands here when it gets expanded the pressure drop the temperature drops below the local stack temperature and so heat flows from the stack into the parcel and again it gets pushed to the left and when it gets pushed to the left the temperature rises above the stack temperature and you have this difference uh, again and you have heat flow from this time from the parcel into the stack the same goes for the pressure oscillations so i'll again come back to this explanation because this is the essence behind the thermoacoustic effect so yes, again, uh, so what we have here is one is an adiabatic expansion, uh, sorry, adiabatic compression, which, which is like a simple modeling of a sound wave, uh, which is adiabatic compression and expansion. But at two and four, you, you have an isobaric uh, heat transfer. And this is because the pressure at two is maintained. And so the a uh, gas parcel gives up the heat to the stack in an isobaric way. So this is the entire schematic. I, I have just made this schematic to actually uh, make the video uh, so that you can uh, keep this picture in mind as, as we go on. So again, this is the plate temperature. And at two, it's hotter than the plate temperatures. We have heat transfer from the gas parcel to the plate. And at four, the temperature is higher than the gas, so you have uh, uh, heat transfer from the stack into the gas. I'll talk a bit about the mass, but not much because it's too complicated. So what you have is uh, a pressure a wave equation and you can find this is the normal pressure wave oscillations you can get. And like in absence of any stack, you get this formula, which is like uh, the simple uh, acoustic formula uh, this is P1 is the pressure oscillation, P1 is the temperature oscillation, and this uh, the dependent on the uh, property of the gas which you have. But what happens is when you introduce a stack, this temperature gradient gets modified. Uh, the thing gets modified. So this is the stack which I'm talking about, like heat transfers from this stack into the gas and vice versa. So uh, the temperature oscillation now is a function of the simple acoustic waves which we had like the term which you saw before but now you have this delta tm which is the temperature gradient along the plate so this modifies this temperature distribution again and this term is for the heat transfer in the y direction which is uh, as you can see in the graph it is uh, inversely proportional which means that the effect of the stack diminishes as you go away from the um, as you go away from it in the y direction so the gas parcel needs to be closer to the stack so as to feel the effect of the stack again this term delta k is an important term it's called the thermal penetration depth i'll come to the thermal penetration depth later so what our aim was to actually do a thermoacoustic simulation using delta ec now delta ec 
is a software which is developed by the Los Alamos Laboratory USA, uh, specifically for uh, simulating thermoacoustic devices. So we took the simplest uh, uh, model which you could have, like this is the speaker, you have the stack here, the Euler portion, and then again, you have a duct here. So this is the physical scheme, and this is the simulation scheme. And the parameters which we looked at was the operating fluid, the stack properties, the tube size, pressure amplitudes, and the power. So this is again a schematic of the thing which you have. Um, so the first topic is how the different uh, gases and like the, what happens when you change the fluid inside the tube. So there is the acoustic effect here. So speed of sound in every gas is different. So, and the speed of sound is related to the wavelength and the frequency, as you know. So, and we operate the device at resonance because at resonance, you have the maximum pressure amplitude. If you have the maximum pressure amplitude, you have the maximum temperature oscillations. And so you can tap the acoustic energy in a more efficient way. So if you use a, a length of tube, which is lambda by four. So again, in a standing wave, you have harmonics, which are like the odd harmonics because one end is closed, one end is open. So, and for different gases, you have different operating frequencies. This is dependent again on the uh, velocity of sound in the medium. So there is an optimized operating frequency, which you need to keep in mind when you keep the length of the thing fixed, which is a more practical scenario. Like you have a single resonator length and you change the gases, but you, again, you need to change the uh, f operating frequency of a speaker. So the conclusion is basically uh, a higher acoustic velocity of higher operating frequency. But the main idea behind this is if you use different gases, you have to operate under different frequencies. So the next part is the effect of different gases on temperature. Now, this is a very unique problem of thermoacoustic devices. The thing is, this stack is not going to stay here indefinitely uh, to allow the heat to pass from the stack material to the gas because you have a wave. And this parcel gets shifted from this end to this end and, it's, and the cycle continues. So the faster it can take up heat from the stack, the better effect you can produce. You know, so like this is the thermal uh, penetration depth which I, which I was talking about. It is defined as the length through which heat diffuses in a fluid in a given time. Now the given time here is scaled with the one over the frequency term because that is more physical here. And for like different mediums, uh, you have these properties and the diffusion rate is the highest in helium. It's almost four times that of air. So if you increase the pressure amplitude more, the uh, gas gets expanded and compressed more. And because it has a very high diffusion rate, it feels the temperature difference. However, for air and CO2, you can see that uh, it saturates of, it saturates almost at, a, at, 100, kilo, at 100 kilopascals. Now this saturation occurs because even if you increase the pressure amplitude, this parcel does not have enough time to capture all the heat from the stack before it moves from this end to this end. So even if you increase the pressure amplitude, it, nothing happens. Um, but for helium, you, you can actually increase the pressure amplitude and have a and actually have an effect of it. But uh, one thing is the slope of these two curves are different because of the CP value. The helium has a very high CP value. So for the same pressure amplitude, that is for the same temperature amplitude, you will have a smaller temperature difference because it's a, it requires a large amount of heat for unit temperature difference. So, so yeah, the main conclusion is that, that the thermal acoustics is very important here, which is not uh, really evident in other cases. The next thing is the stack spacing. The stack spacing, again, the control. <laughs> Uh, Only one. Yes, sir. Uh, try to maintain the time. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll take just two minutes more. I'll take two okay. minutes more. Uh, so the stack split spacing is uh, again the conclusion is that you have an optimized plate because you have an optimized spacing between two plates because if you decrease the uh, uh, spacing too much, you increase the viscous effects. So the Viscous effects increases because the parcel is moving between this stack, you have a loss of kinetic energy. If you increase the heat, if you increase the spacing be between the plates, the thermal penetration effect decreases because the gas does not feel the effect of the stack anymore. So there is an optimized value and the stack material depends 
uh, is also a critical criteria here. You need to have a low thermal conductivity so that you don't allow the heat to travel inside the stack from one end to another, but the heat travels only through the gaseous medium. And also, you need to have a high heat capacity so that you don't have a very high increase in temperature of the stack when the energy gets transferred. So yes, the optimum stack is compulsory. Again, I'll come a bit to the position of the stack. Again, it's evident that, uh, so I'll not play, I'll let the video play. It's evident that this compression and uh, expansion positions need to be well captured by the stack length because if you have a smaller stack length, you don't really have the gas expanding uh, to its fullest at the ends and compressing at the ends. So again, you have an optimized stack position for it. And again, you can see that if you have a very small length of the stack, you won't really capture the entire pressure nodes and the anti nodes. So again, you have an optimized stack length. So you need to tune these parameters in order to get the results. About the dimensions, it's easy. Like if you have a bigger tube, you need to pool a bigger area. Uh, so if you have a bigger tube, you have higher volume flow rate amplitudes because for the same pressure amplitude, a bigger tube means you have higher discharge rates. But if you need a higher, it, you need to cool down a higher mm -hmm. area. So, uh, so it, it produces similar uh, cooling effects. About the power requirements, this is one important criteria. So if you reduce the area by almost 10 times, the acoustic power necessary reduces by one fifth. And the operating decibel levels are also reduced, which is like 190 decibels or something. So it's pretty noisy, but the thing is, you need to enclose the thing inside to have a uh, better performance. So again, the conclusions are given here, but I'll not go through it. But I'll show one part which we are planning to do it's like we had an experimental effect. We, uh, sorry, we experimental set up to study the effect. So it was like we had a speaker, a resonator tube, the stack, and you had the plug. This plug you can shift from top to bottom to vary the length to get the resonance because you don't really change the frequency of the speaker. So how do you make the stack? You had this thermal, you had this photographic film which you have, and then you put wires in between so that you get the spacing. The spacing is of the order of 0.5 millimeters, and it's very critical. You need to have a proper spacing, otherwise you don't get the effect. And we measured the temperatures at both ends using two RTDs, the resistance and uh, thermal detectors, and you have a speaker at one end. So yeah, this is the result which we got, but it's not really good because we expect much better results. But again, there are lots of leakages and it's sound. So you need to completely seal the system and also have better thermal sealing, otherwise you don't get the effect. So the maximum effect which you could achieve after say 15 minutes of operation was Around two, around two degrees Celsius. So yeah, the future scope and improvements of a setup is using wires of smaller diameters to achieve the small uniform stack spacing. Experimenting with smaller tubes so that you can uh, reduce the power and also the losses. Yes, and using heat exchangers so that you can effectively take the heat away from the stack and not like let it diffuse through the medium. And also, that's uh, working with the uh, stack material and shape, and also playing with the speaker capacity. So that is our aim next. And But uh, my main part was actually looking at the parameters, how they evolve in the system. So thank you for your attention. It was a bit long. I'll be happy to take up any questions and comments. Uh, uh, hello? Hello, hello yes. 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 Uh, this, there is some noise. Uh, Anyone audible? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes. Um, this is your undergraduate uh, research work. Yeah, this was my bachelor research work. Nice your research work. Um, and any question from audience? Uh, myself, Dr. Nimarandu from Jodhpur. Actually, uh, only one uh, very good work. Uh, uh, very good. Being an undergraduate yeah. student, uh, presentation and uh, also conducting this kind of uh, work is really appreciable. Just I have a simple Thank question. Uh, your concept is really very good. Uh, in reality, where this kind of concept can be implemented and uh, a device can be made uh, for uh, practical use? Yeah, so the thing is, this refrigerator is very small, as you can see. So you can use it for like low capacity, uh, like where you need to cool a very small region. 
and like it uses pretty less power and pretty less components so you can actually this thing is this entire thing is highly portable all you need to do is just pack it up inside all you have is the speaker and a tube and a stack so like i myself uh, made this system portable enough because i needed to carry it between college and my home so yeah one thing is it's highly portable one next thing is it can produce cooling effects for small systems and the third thing is it uses very cheap materials so again the cost thing is thing but the problem is it's not yet uh, commercialized and it's still under research phase because you need to optimize these parameters really well so that is one thing which is the problem and also like uh, for commercial cooling uh, i don't think this is uh, that useful for large scale cooling okay okay thank you very much very nice good nice nice uh, again nice on your one your undergraduate research work in everything is nice carry on okay. your research work in future okay thank you sir uh, we will move that uh, next researcher um gaurav banerji is here gaurav banerji yes sir am i audible okay hi yeah, is audible you can I'm now start the presentation yes, okay 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 so is the screen visible wait to it mm -hmm. Hmm. Ah, right. Now visible. Good. Okay. Now visible. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm starting. Uh, so very good afternoon to the session chair and all the delegates present on this conference. And I'd like to also thank uh, the organizers for organizing this amidst this pandemic situation. So myself, Good Banerjee, I'm a PhD scholar from Jodhpur University, and the topic which I will be delivering today, a lecture, is. on numerical analysis of heat transfer characteristics under single jet ai impingement and the work has been carried out under the guidance of professor chintu mukhopadhyay shonendu sen pranibesh mondal and shorob sarkar so this is the basic overview of the outline which i will be covering throughout this presentation the first the introduction part uh, the basic part which we will be dealing is rot cooling or run out table cooling and this is a essential or a very effective tool for cooling metals in a hot strip mill almost all the steel or metal industry uses this method the rot cooling method to cool the hot metals now apart from uh, this cooling the cooling itself can be done through various methods out of which the jet impingement cooling is one of the most commonly used mechanism due to the factor that this jet impingement cooling produces high or uh, results into a high heat transfer coefficient the heat transfer coefficient is almost 2 to 10 times than that of any conventional cross circulation dryer and it has been proven from the literature works now the thing is that this jet impingement cooling as it uh, is heard is not that simple to simulate because there are several modeling parameters and those plays a pivotal role on how the actual cooling process being carried out as for the literature sir it has been seen that very few modeling parameters has been compared with each other that how the effects of the capability is coming out to be during the numerical analysis so the basic objective of this work is to study a single free jet impinging on a hot flat surface and analyze this heat transfer characteristics within the impingement zone and essentially compare the adaptability of different models that will be used throughout this simulation essentially we have considered among the varied effects we have uh, taken into consideration three main factors to simulate one is the effect of the turbulence models secondly is the turbulent prandtl number and thirdly the near wall treatment so the numerical analysis has been segregated into three parts the mathematical model the geometry and the meshing and the solver so coming to the mathematical model we have considered essentially the fluid to be air steady and incompressible and the converse, uh, conservation equations uh, solved in cartesian coordinates and for the simulation in the cfd ansys fluent solver we have taken standard kf sullen model and reynolds stress model and the wall functions out of the several one functions present 
actually three wall functions are present so we have considered the standard wall function and non equilibrium wall function for the comparison part these are the equations conservation equations that has been taken in their forms where this u i u j essentially means the fluctuating velocity in the x and y direction respectively t is for the temperature p for the pressures so i'm going to next to the geometry part this will be the geometry of the physical domain which will be simulating where there will be an input portion and the left and right part will be the outlet ones and the thing is that the second geometry which has been shown on the right bottom corner we have actually simulated both the cases for a full domain as well as a half domain and it's been seen that both the domains are it means the results for the full domain and the half domain are well agreement with each other so just to save the computational time we have proceeded the uh, future results with only the half domain case taking a symmetric wall region b shows here the downstream region where after hitting the hot plate or the impingement surface the fluid flows and the region a is the stagnation region or the impingement zone this is the meshing that has been done now uh, for the sake of uh, complication we have left out the grid independence test results over here we have checked with four cases one 14 into 100 grids another 32 into 90 another 26 into 90 and the lastly 20 into 80 cases it is being seen that the surface heat transfer coefficient is to have almost the same values for all the cases so we have chosen the least grid density that is 20 into 80 for only the impingement region and for the hot surface or the impingement uh, or the surface near the plate surface and the confined zone we have also taken a finer mesh as been shown on the picture and this variable meshing has been done only just to save the computational time now these are the solvents used we used ansys fluent version 14.6 using a finite volume code coupled with a pressure based solver and these were the boundary conditions the inlet was taken to a velocity inlet and three different velocities were taken into consideration by uh, actually the reason was to vary the reynolds number the outlets were taken to be outflow condition the impinged surface or the hot plate was taken to be isothermal initially the semi confined surface were taken to be adiabatic walls the plane of symmetry as symmetric condition now the turbulent intensity which actually comes coupled with the inlet condition has been taken to be 2% and the length scale to be 0.07 d where this capital d essentially means the nozzle diameter or the nozzle width in 2d and the solution scheme to be uh, simplex for this case now just a brief overview of the two models that has been taken the rsm and the standard k epsilon model the rsm model actually computes all the components of reynolds stress tensor individually whereas the standard k epsilon model uses an isotropic concept and they take all the eddy viscosities all together so uh, it has been seen that um, from the previous literature results that the rsm model essentially gives more accurate results and are also computationally cheaper than all the other models present in uh, fluent database and another advantage is it only requires the initial and boundary final boundary conditions where is the standard tensor model mostly fails to perform within the elastic medium or for the flows which is influenced by rotational effects but still we have shown the results over here for both the models and which can be uh, taken to be or can be considered better so we'll be coming to that uh, in the later cases now the modeling parameters the geometric conditions has been taken or segregated out broadly into three cases the w essentially means over here the nozzle width capital h to be the distance between the confined surface and the hot plate reynolds number three different reynolds number cases has been taken and finally ti is the temperature of the inlet fluid that is the temperature of air and ts is the temperature of the hot surface in most of the cases it was varied within a range of 30 to 40 kelvin the uh, results that has been taken firstly we are taking into consideration the effect of the turbulence models we in our hand have two different turbulence models 
one is the standard KSN model, another is the RSM model. Now it is being, and the, both the results are validated with uh, experimental work done by Heinengen in the year 1984. So the, and the geometry also matches with the work they have done during the experimental work. No, it's being seen that overall the nature of the uh, qualitative curve matches the NU distribution, Nusselt number distribution matches with the work of the experimental data. But the thing is that for the standard Kepsilon model, there is the secondary peak from onwards, the matching is better than for the RSM model. And uh, that might be due to the case that, and there is a huge over prediction on the onset of the NU distribution curve. This might be the reason that the onset of the NU distribution curve actually resembles the stagnation of the impingement zone. And there is a huge amount of turbulence, which might have been the reason for this over prediction. And the secondary peak generally forms due to a vortices formed within the channel or the confined surface within uh, the space between the confined surface and the hot plate. Now, actually, during uh, these vertical flows, what happens? They, the vertical flows breaks down into miniaturized turbulence or bubbles. And what happens? These bubbles actually constrict the channel area. And whenever there is a constriction in the flow channel area, the local heat transfer coefficient increases. This might be attributed to the formation of a secondary peak within the flow domain. Considering the case two, we have the case two is the case where we are actually taking a uh, more distance or higher nozzle to space surfacing. That is the capital H has been increased in this case. In this case, it has been seen that since the capital H or the distance between the confined surface and the flat hot plate has been increased, there is no constriction or vortices formed. So no presence of secondary peak. In this case, the stagnation zone has also been well predicted by the standard Kersalan model and the validation result with CADEC. This work has been done as early as 1968, one of the first works on ROT simulation by jet impingement. But the problem over here, this RSM model uh, fails mostly in the downstream region. It over predicts. Coming to the second case, we have considered the effect of turbulent Prandtl number. Now, by default, in a fluid database, the turbulent Prandtl number comes to be 0.85. We have taken that case and we have also varied other two cases to 1.1 and 1.5. In this case, it's been seen in the first case, the diagram alongside is only for the case of standard KFCN model. Now, it's been well observing, observing that for almost all three cases, although it can consider the 1.5 case, the rest of the two cases are over prediction and mostly the over prediction is huge during the stagnation region. But downstream, the data is quite well fitting with the nature of the curve as given by Heinengen. This is the result for the RSM model. Now for the RSM model, stagnation point has been detected well and more accurately than the previous cases of the standard KFCN model, which was a good amount of over prediction. But the problem is it deals with the audit, depicts the secondary peak, but with a good amount of inaccuracy. It has been shown on the latter part of the downstream region. So one thing can be said that with high Prandtl number or high turbulent Prandtl number, standard KFCN model is coming out to be a better model than the RSM model for the time being. Now, thirdly, we are going for the effects of near wall functions. We have taken two near wall functions over here. One is the standard wall function. Another is the uh, non-equilibrium wall function. Now, the standard wall function actually is a gross point of view. And it is not a good model to simulate the near wall treatments during a turbulent or within a turbulent regime, whereas the non-equilibrium wall function is a better one since it actually considers two different viscous layers in its simulation. It considers two linear viscous sublayers uh, within the fully turbulent logarithmic region. So that's why it should supposedly to give a better result. But let's see what happens. 
Now from the diagram, it is evident that for all the four cases, the non-equilibrium wall function gives a better prediction. It doesn't over predict actually. Why are we seeing a better prediction? Because from the any of the experimental value, it's being seen that the experimental curve is falling below the simulation curves. So that means any of the simulation results that gives a lower uh, Nusselt number prediction or Nusselt number curves will be better than the one that is over predicting. So from that point of view, we can say that the non-equilibrium wall function for both the models, standard KFL and RSM is giving us better results. And now comparing with the models itself, the viscous models, the standard KFL model is highly over predicting the Nusselt number distribution. And this is the case for a very high Reynolds number, almost a value of 71300. So it's been, uh, and this might be the case that the non-equilibrium wall function is giving me a better result due to the case that the RSM model coupled with the non-equilibrium wall function actually considered the effect of high pressure gradients and the flow separation within the turbulent regime. This might be the region that it is capturing the turbulence effects better and giving us uh, or yielding better results. So briefly we can conclude that for high Reynolds number the non-equilibrium wall function is more suitable but for the low Reynolds number cases as seen in case one and case two the standard wall function is giving me better results. See, if we just conclude, first of all, in order to, means it is obviously relevant from the validated data that the results varies uh, significantly with the different modeling parameters. So we have to have a fine tuning of the parameters that we will be using to simulate. And in order to simulate a uh, practical case of ROT cooling, we have to vary several other parameters also. We have already seen that the higher nozzle to surface spacing complements the nature of the NU distribution curve with the experimental data. But for the lower one, one is giving me good result, like the RSM is predicting the secondary peak, whereas the say, standard case and fails to predict. But on the opposite side of the coin, the RSM, although it predicts a secondary peak, but it predicts inaccurately. So overall, we can say that for lower nozzle to surface spacing, it really requires further study. But for the higher ones, there is no secondary peak, no vortices formed. So it is all a bit safeless to be simulated. And the variation of parental number has to be seen, have a big or significant effect along the downstream region, not on the impingement region. So we again have to simulate perfectly or fine tune what can be the changes that can be made to simulate during the downstream of the flow. And the near wall functions, as it's been prominent, that it is also affecting. But one thing I will have to say that these are not the only parameters that are affecting, but might be this one of the major parameters. But they are in order to simulate a practical case of ROT cooling, variation of several other parameters will also have to be taken into consideration. Likely we are already proceeded with the work that uh, considering the fluid to be water, which is more realistic case, along with the calculation within the boiling regime, because uh, non-boiling case is also being simulated, means presently the, uh, those works are going on. And other effects also includes the turbulent intensity within the boundary condition, the geometry of the nozzle, Means there are several other parameters which can be simulated, but these are three important one which just cannot be blindly proceeded with the default values given in the fluid solver. So we have to change this. So this was the findings of this work. So I thank you and open to any questions. Uh... Uh, good up, uh, good up. Nice presentation. Any questions from audience end? No. Uh, good up. You are doing now PhD work. Yes, sir. Uh, from where? Jadavpur. Jadavpur University. Okay. Uh, very good. Your uh, presentation and your research work, and also nice presented. Thank you, sir.
Okay, I have no question. Good okay. your presentation. So today, uh, total six pages uh, paper presented here in the field of thermal fluid engineering. Um, so session uh, is over here. Okay. Thank you, Professor Mondal. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.